All right. Good evening. Uh, the what is this date? The fe- January twenty fifth meeting of the Rent Control Board is called to order. Would the secretary please call the roll? Commissioner Flora. Here. Commissioner Phyllis. Here. Commissioner Duran. Here. Commissioner Foster. Here. And Commissioner Trosis is not here yet. All right. Uh, let, let's all salute our flag together. All right, the next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. If anyone wants to take a moment to glance them over, I will entertain a motion for approval of the minutes. So moved. I second. All right. All those in favor of approval of the minutes, say aye. 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 And since one of our members was absent last month, would uh, or last meeting, uh, are there any abstentions from approval of the minutes? Yes. So noted. Thank you. Give our fellow commissioner a moment to get settled. No problem. All right. Um, We don't have any uh, requests to speak publicly tonight, but I would just make a couple of quick announcements. Uh, The city would like us to tell you that in case of an emergency, please note the locations of the exits in this council chamber. One is behind you and one is to your left over here under the TV screen. Uh, The entrance door that you came in leads to the lobby exit, and the door to my right and your left exits directly to the outdoors, should you need it. Uh, And if anyone else wishes to address the board, either on a specific item on tonight's agenda or public comment, please see the secretary to fill in a speaker slip. Looks like this. Uh, We also have parking validations available. If you'd see our board secretary uh, between now and and when you leave, he will give you a parking validation slip. Well, thank you all for attending uh, this additional meeting of the Rent Control Board. We're going to go to any other announcements from staff. Yes. Thank you. I have a couple of um, announcements this evening. First of all, the next Rent Control Seminar will be the one that we do on owning rental property in Santa Monica. That's scheduled for April 3rd from 930 till noon. Um, It will be in the main library multi-purpose room, and anybody who's interested in attending should contact our office at 310-458-8751 or send an email to the board. I also wanted to um, inform the board, you may have received a hold the date card. Um, The annual boards and commissions dinner this year will be on Monday, April 30th at the Broad stage, Um, so please mark your calendars. Chairperson Foster will be taping our video segment for that with highlights of the board's accomplishments in 2017. The other thing I wanted to mention is Housing California, which is a conference that some of you have attended, will be held um, in Sacramento from March 7th to 9th. And as you'll note, that conflicts with the board's March meeting, which is, ten- which is scheduled for March 8th. So I would um, ask that the board let me know if you're interested in attending. And if so, um, I'd ask about your availability for a meeting on either March 1st or March 22nd instead of the March 8th. Um, So you can get back to me about that um, if you're interested in attending and about your availability. I would probably recommend um, the March 22nd meeting if possible. So if you're all available on March 22nd, if you could let me know that, that would be helpful. And and I don't know if you all have your calendars tonight, but if not, you can let me know in the next couple of days, and I'll communicate with all of you about that then, okay? All right. So those are my announcements this evening. Oh, I did want to also say uh, you have on the dais in front of you five written communications regarding item 11A this evening, the public hearing. We will, some of them just came in this afternoon, but in the interest of giving you an opportunity to read them before they arrive, we will in the future email those to you as they arrive as well and have them written as well. Right, because even if we could spend a few minutes before we leave our homes or offices to come here and see them, it it would take less time away from the beginning of the meeting. All right, thank you, staff. All right, uh, since we have no chits for public comment, we're gonna go right to tonight's uh, item. 11A, a public hearing. 
to hear amendments to regulations 3105, 3106, 3108, and 3109, an addition of new regulation 3120, respecting limitations on rent surcharges for local taxes and local voted indebtedness. May we please have the staff report? Uh, yes, good evening, Commissioners. On January the 11th, the Board directed staff to return at this meeting with proposed regulatory amendments that would eliminate surcharges for new tenancies and tenancies in buildings that are reassessed due to qualifying transfers of ownership or significant improvements. Until December 2012, Article 18, the portion of the Charter that includes the City's rent control law, included the following se sentence in Section 1805, Subdivision B, quote, each year, the board shall generally adjust rents upward by granting landlords a utility and tax increase adjustment for actual increases in the city of Santa Monica for taxes and utilities, unquote. In November 2012, the voters eliminated that language from the charter. Under Section 1805's current iteration, the annual general adjustment is now a simple percentage of the consumer price index. Gone is any requirement and any allowance for, additional, for additions to rents in the form of pass-throughs. Over the past several months, the board has also heard from or has heard from uh, numerous tenants who have complained of the hardships caused by increases in their rents due to surcharges. New tenants whose landlords have already established their rents at market level have complained that they have been surprised when a year in, after the tenancies began, their landlords not only imposed annual infl inflationary adjustments, but also surcharges, sometimes in the amount of several hundred dollars annually to rents that presumably already include a full accounting for the owner's overhead. Longer term tenants, including some on fixed incomes, have informed the board of annual rent increases amounting to several hundred dollars above the annual general adjustment resulting from tax-based surcharges imposed after their buildings were sold and reassessed. In view of these legal and factual realities, the board has announced its intention to sunset or phase out existing surcharges. It directed staff to draft proposed regulations to disallow surcharges for any units as to which any of the following three things are true. One, the unit's rent was established as a result of a new tenancy after the unit had been voluntarily vacated. Two, the unit is in a building that was reassessed as, as a result of an ownership transfer. And three, the unit is on a property that was reassessed as a result of significant improvements. Proposed Regulation 3120 includes these provisions. Amendments are also proposed to existing surcharge regulations, but only to the extent necessary to be consistent with proposed new Regulation 3120. The board stated at its last meeting that it wished to have these changes take effect immediately. As drafted, they would do so by specifying that they go into effect on February 1. In order to provide information to all affected landlords and tenants before the changes go into effect, staff has also proposed an alternative recommendation under which the charges, uh, changes would go into effect on March 1. Um, Proposed Regulation 3120C specifies that new tenancies to which uh, the new tenancies to which it would apply are those that began since the last time the board allowed the imposition of an annual general adjustment, September 1, 2017. This is because the surcharges relate to general adjustments. As yet another alternative, not one of the ones that's specified in the written staff report, uh, the board could consider having the proposed amendments go into effect with respect to any sale or qualifying improvement occurring on or after the amendment's effective date and with respect to any new tenancy beginning on or after the next annual general adjustment, which would occur on September 1, 2018. This would also give staff sufficient time to make the public fully aware of any regulatory changes. Um, so there are three possibilities. There's immediately March 1 and, um, and, and September 1. The board also directed staff to present uh, it with the attached proposed regulatory amendments, uh, I'm sorry, to propose, to provide with the attached proposed regulatory amendments, a uh, sample of what the general adjustment uh, calculation sheet would look like if the proposed amendments were to be adopted, and that is included as Exhibit C to your staff report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do any of my fellow commissioners have any clarifying questions for staff at this time? Commissioner Tarosis. Okay, thank you for that comprehensive review. Um, can you tell us, you know, you alluded to in this staff report and uh, in prior staff reports to numerous tenants coming forward. Um, I just want to quantify what we're talking about. Can you, can you tell us how many buildings sold 
um, over the la- since 2012 or even just over the last year, if you have that information and how many units would have been in those buildings? Ani? Um, uh, do you have the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just trying to get a, the scale of what we're talking about here. The answer to your question is yes, I can give you that. Oh, That's great. That's so helpful. <laughs> <laughs> a, a cable. Um, while we're waiting for that, can we... Oh, right there. Can, yeah, okay, I have another question after that. Yeah, this information was in a previous staff report. Um, you can see by year the number of properties that were... Um, oh, wait. Uh, that were sold and reassessed, and the number of units affected. So we're talking about 3,000 units here. Yes. Right. And that we know of. At, at least. At, at least. The, the, the 2017 figure is, you can see that there's a fairly um, consistent number of, of units from 2012 to 2016 um, in the in the 60-some range on average, and then it drops way off in 2017. That's not because there was suddenly a drop in the number of properties right. sold. It's just that we don't have, have the information the, from the it, assessor's office yet. Right, right, of course. So th this very well could be higher. Although, I, yeah, I have a little additional yeah, information. Yeah, sure, sure. Tracy took, has more info. Well, we took a look at the number of properties that have registered as with purchase dates in 2017. And there are about 132 um, affecting 884 units so far. But until we can see what happens with the assessment of the property, we don't know whether that was an ownership change for estate planning purposes or an actual change of ownership that would re result in a reassessment. So um, already we do have 132 properties that are registered as having changed ownership in this 2017. Okay, that's very helpful. and also. 2017. 2017 we don't have 2018 yet yeah um and also not to sound like a broken record can you tell us uh if any other jurisdictions throughout the state of california allow surcharges to be passed through to tenants and if they do what the cost sharing is only one uh does uh san francisco and only if the ballot measure by which the assessment is approved says so Okay, so you're saying that all the other jurisdictions that have rent control throughout the state, including our neighbors in West Hollywood and Los Angeles, do not allow for property tax, voter indebted um, surcharges to be passed through the tenants? Yes. Okay, thanks for clarifying that again. Thanks. All right, we have several speakers on this. Are there any other clarifying questions uh, for staff before we move on to hear from the public? All right, seeing none, we're going to hear... Oh, was it for staff? Not clarify. I mean, I may have staff questions, but I can wait for the speakers. Okay. Um, I have Gary Bonart. We'll be followed by Bill Davids, Mary Stewart. I'm just giving you the order so you can be ready. Nani Grinnell and Mia Beard. Um, Mr. Speaker, you've requested five minutes. Let's make sure the mic is on. The red. It's oh, it's on. Okay, very good. I'm Gary Bonner. How are you? Thank you. Um, I'd like to first compliment on your job. I saw it the other night on television, and you guys are really doing a fine thing. Uh, a little bit of a note that might throw me out of 11A. If we have such a tremendous computer base and everything is computerized and mechanized, if when people sign up for a unit, they can put their email on there, we have more than our splendid audience tonight. Just, you know, 30,000 last one time. We'll note that for another, if we could okay. um, we'll speak to 11A. Uh, 11A, there are 30,000 units under control, the rent control board? About 26,000. So we have over 10% have been affected by this. I live in a building that was family owned for 40, 35 years, 40 years. The valuation of the building when it was bought was 353,000. It just sold for $14 million. So. It's definitely it, just the sale is going to corrupt our rent control system by putting either two to three hundred dollars, who knows, on top of my rent, which is already you know established by the rent control board. So I appreciate your idea of implementing it as soon as possible. Another thing I'd like to add is 
a pass through of $20, $30, something like that is not too much. But when it gets up around 100 which it can approach reasonably, um, there's got to be a more equitable distribution of those charges. If I live in 500 square feet and somebody has 1,500 square feet, that means I have to have three times as much fund to get my value out of the property or out of what I'm paying in three times as much taxation. In other words, if, if, I, if 500 is paying 100 in surcharges and 1,500 is paying 100 in surcharges, there's a difference there that should be looked. So square footage should be taken as well as anything else into each unit. A lot of units are homogeneous, they're the same size, and so there's not little to go on. But a lot of buildings are irregular and they require specific attention with facts and numbers and figures because it's been coming through that way for a long time. But like I say, it's only $20 or $25. But when you get up to 100 150 200 300 which could be legitimized, then you have to take into account how much space do you get in our beautiful community. I have no kids. I don't hassle with that, but my tax is three times as much as someone who's living in the building and has children. Um, once again, bless you. Stressing the importance of communication to the community through the rent community, through emails, square footage or a proper balance of getting what you pay for or paying the fair share, and immediate consideration on uh, how quick to act on this. People are already in debt now, and whether there's a retroactive repayment, because we don't we don't get to see the profit. Um, person that walked away from my building, we paid his tax, whatever fee it was, for 20 years or since 2012. He walks away with a $13.5 million profit and we get stuck with a new tax bill. You know, when you go into business, I don't know any other business that says, we'll pay your tax for you, unless it's a baseball stadium or something like that. And you know how those deals get. Thank you very much and you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. And next we have Bill Davids. Hi, Bill Davids. I, first, I want to thank you for your efforts and serious consideration regarding this issue that I've raised over the last couple of years. Uh, th there are two issues in my mind that I just want to clarify right now. I'm in a building that was sold back in 2015. Will the phasing out of the surcharges apply to buildings that were purchased a few short years ago? And I'm not sure from my reading of Stephen Lewis's memo and from what was just discussed as to whether uh, the surcharges would be wiped out retroactively starting this September. Uh, the other concern is the median average that was discussed in Stephen Lewis's memo. I'm not quite sure if the median uh, 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 average of the surcharges was distorted by the number of buildings that were purchased well in excess of their original valuations. So uh, I'm hopeful that when you vote on this matter that retroactively on the buildings that have been purchased for sky-high valuations over the last few years, the surcharges will be eliminated. And for those who uh, will have the surcharge is applied, if you're applying the median surcharge uh, that you have determined in Stephen Lewis's memo, I would hope that you take into consideration that it might be distorted because of the sale of all of the buildings of the last few years. So again, thank you very much for the consideration and for your efforts. Just a moment, I think we have a, a question it's a clarifying question for the yeah I was wondering could um, Council Lewis here uh, educate us as to the answers to these questions right but you you said he said he was unclear if these would apply retroactively or on a going forward basis yeah can you just clarify for, for us what, what we're talking about um, there's nothing in what the board directed staff at the last meeting to do that would make these retroactive? So the answer is no, they would not be retroactive. 
Well, I think I still have time to talk. Then we would still be applied the median surcharge that had been discussed in Mr. Lewis's memo. What would happen to the buildings that have been sold in the last few years? So just one moment, please. I think individual questions about individual tenancies or buildings, you can avail yourself of the staff for your questions tomorrow, and there perhaps might be answers to your questions revealed here tonight or at a future meeting. So we can only talk about item 11A during your comment tonight, and we can't speculate on other items about your individual tenancy at this time. I was just... Yes, Tracy's going to clarify something else. I'm sorry, I want to clarify. Mr. Davids asked me to send him the staff report from the previous meeting. So you're looking at the staff report, I'm sorry, that was for our last meeting. There was a new staff report, I'm sure there's a copy of it here, which has the regulatory language that the board is considering this evening, which is about what Mr. Lewis just explained. Buildings that are either sold from this time going forward or from the effective date of the ordinance or reassessed based upon significant improvements or new tenancies. So the current regulatory language that the board will be considering does not address those other points. Well, unfortunately, then that leaves a lot of tenants exposed, and that doesn't really remedy the situation that was presented over the last two years. And I think there are going to be a lot of unhappy tenants as a result. So anyway, thank you, and this is very discouraging. Okay, thank you for your comment. The next speaker is Mary Stewart. Hello, board members. My name is Mary Stewart. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my concerns. Last month when I spoke at the meeting, I addressed the pass-throughs. I mentioned my twin sons and how excited they were for voting for the first time and all the interesting propositions that they were eager to vote on. Then I mentioned to them that they had to pay for these items through taxes, you know, gas taxes, sales taxes, things like that, and they were no longer enthused. I talked about the importance that if someone votes on a measure that they need to share some of the costs. When I sat down, Mr. Flora agreed with me and said that, yes, it's important that we all have some skin in the game. Yesterday I was told that item number 11 wants to, be, to remove the approved rent surcharges for the various local taxes and voted indebtedness. All four of these taxes were previously voted on by the public, many of which were tenants. They were approved for surcharges by the Rent Control Board. To remove them now is unfair and not an equitable sharing of cost. These were provisions made to the landlords that the bond issues would be spread out equally to all of the citizens in Santa Monica in order for them to support the issues. I think it's important you keep your promises now, in the past, and in the future so everyone has some skin in the game. May I suggest we allow the current rent surcharges to stay in place? then freeze the dollar amounts at 2017 levels and not increase for the future. You could also set up a hardship process for those tenants that are low income. This seems fair to me. It seems equitable to all parties. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Next, we have Nani Grinnell. Hello, good evening. Um, I'm just here again um, to tell you that I appreciate your compassion and your understanding about the situation I'm in with the, the rent sur um, tax surcharge pass-through, and I certainly appreciate you working on this. But um, may I ask an, just one question? It, do I understand from this report that it would only be buildings sold after September um, 2017? If staff wants to tackle that, the, I, I think there's been some general confusion as to what's being tackled tonight and what isn't potentially being tackled tonight. The direction that the board gave at the last meeting was that it wanted to see regulations that would result in 
the disallowance of surcharges for buildings that were sold on or after the date that this that regulations have adopted go into effect. Um, so, uh, so no, it would not um, affect any property that was sold before the date that the regulation goes into effect. This regulation. Yes, if it, if if it, if it, if, it, if it is in fact adopted, which it, the board will then consider that tonight. I think if the public will be patient, we will tackle item 11A and take comments about 11A, which is a prospective regulation. And then the public, I'm certain, will have future opportunities to speak about future agenda items. Okay. So I just want to reiterate my position because my building was um, purchased at the end of 2016, and therefore I would still bear the almost $1,500 annual tax pass-through if that were to occur and, and that if it, it, if it was adopted for that particular date, the date that this is adopted. That's all. And thank you so much for considering all of this. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mia Beard is our last speaker on this item. Hello, I'm Mia Beard. I don't really know what I'm doing here except that I want to support the people who, first of all, I want to say thank you that there is, a, is even a, a rent control board. That makes me feel safe. I do live in a rent control apartment in Santa Monica. And if I'm supporting my friend who got hit by this big bill, if I was hit by a bill like that, I'd have to move out. That doesn't feel good and it doesn't feel safe. I think nowadays we have to speak up. We have to come to these meetings. We are happy to have people like you on this board and on our side. So I wanna say I'm here to encourage people to come forward and speak up their hardships and whatever. And I would be happy to come to other meetings too. I object to the pass-through about the taxes. It's too much of a hardship for m many people, including not only low rental people, but medium too. Our, me our middle class is suffering in this country. And it's times like this that, that I feel proud to speak up, even though I don't know what 11A is or what's going on but just happy to have you here and thank you and goodbye thank you very much All right, let's so that will conclude uh, public comment on this item and we will now move into uh, deliberation amongst the board uh, and we will open with commissioner phyllis thank you chair foster uh, i wanted to thank staff for their thoughtful report on this item I think you've addressed many of the, my two main concerns which are what happens when buildings turn over to um, new owners and you see these massive increases I mean uh, going from a three hundred fifty three hundred fifty thousand dollar property to a fourteen million dollar property is astronomical I can't even imagine what that does to the pass-throughs um, however uh, so, I um, so I'm, I'm I'm very thankful that we're kind of prioritizing um, those immediate concerns. I want to also address a, a couple concerns that I've heard from members of the public. Um, first, I want to clarify that this proposal, as currently written, does not take away any existing pass-throughs. I want to make that abundantly clear. So, if you are I want to be very clear and very precise. For if you are a current landlord and you have pass-throughs, for as long as you retain the property, you retain those pass-throughs. The only time the pass-throughs go away is when your building turns over or if you do massive improvements, right? Those are the only two situations in which the pass-throughs go away. What? Okay. Or if you have a new tenant, 
in which case you can also negotiate with your tenant to include the amount of these pass-throughs in the rent. Now, the reason why it doesn't go to new tenants is because also you have notice of the elimination of pass-throughs, so you can presumably negotiate or include that when you're setting the market rent for your tenant. Okay, so for tenants, for tenancies that have already been created, this allows not only the pass-through, but the incremental increases permitted under Proposition 13, correct? Correct? So long as yes. the landlord does not change. Yes. So, so this actually means that there's a lot of protection for existing property owners. This, is, this was done with a lot of forethought because we don't want to put mom and pop property owners out of business. Those are the types of landlords that we care a lot about. They develop relationships with their tenants. We acknowledge that on this board. And we understand that we want to implement policy that supports long-term property ownership. Now, for tenants, um, this also doesn't mean that we aren't going to do anything that's not retroactive. However, we've already seen that there are probably about 3,000, maybe over 3,000 units that have already been affected by these, uh, by these measures. We have to stop the hemorrhaging, and I think we have to stop it as soon as possible. We've been talking about pass-throughs. Some, some people, Commissioner Foster, has been talking about these pass-throughs for, for years. We really need to make sure that tenants are being protected now. Um, because I think retroactively, retroactivity becomes a, a trickier issue, and we need to really talk with property owners and we need to talk with the school community. We need to talk with the college community. And the, and the easiest piece to break off that has the least opposition is this piece for new owners and new tenants. And why is that the easiest piece to break off? It's because everyone has noticed. Let's, let's, and, and I'm, let's and, that to, to 11. I mean, let's. That's what I'm doing. OK, thank you. Um, So, I'm sorry. so the reason why this should pass tonight and why I encourage my fellow board members to pass it tonight is this is the first step to tackling a very, very thorny issue, okay? And the first step has broad, broad, broad support. I talked to Jennifer Kennedy this evening who said that SMUR supports this. We met with Action Apartments on Monday evening. I met with Wes and Elaine and Carolyn Trosis was there. And they said, and Michael Millman was there, and he said Action has discussed this with their owners, and they give it an 8 out of 10. I mean, when have you seen kind of broad-based support for measures that will, uh, that will, and I believe that was Mr. Millman said it was 8 out of 10. I see some talking in the back of the audience. 8 out of 10 for what I, <laughs> uh, um, uh, for just this, uh, when a building turns over and new tenancies. Um, because I think it's fair. People are doing it with notice. People understand what the impacts are moving forward. And I think, you know, it's, um, it's about time that we implement a change to protect tenants, I think. And I think we need to do it as soon as possible. Otherwise, we're going to continue seeing tenants who have or are in the process of losing their home, facing hundreds of dollar increases every single month, who won't be able to stay there. And I think it violates the spirit of the rent control law and, and the public trust with which we were invested um, to, to put this off any further. So I really encourage my fellow commissioners to take this first initial step tonight and then I I trust that we can address these kind of thornier issues of retroactivity and a cap uh, further down the line. So I, I really ask for my fellow commissioner support, um, and I look forward to their thoughts. Thank you. Commissioner Flora. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, I, at the, at the, I'm going to get to a question for staff, but at the risk of repeating some of what my fellow commissioner Nicole Phyllis has said, I'm going to do it anyway because it seems like sometimes we need to make clear to certain members of the public what we are doing and what we're not doing. 
about 80 times before they get it. So once again, those that feel threatened by a uh, mistaken notion that we are eliminating past, because I can just imagine some late chit coming and saying, I can't believe you're getting rid of pass-throughs and we should have sharing. We're not getting rid of pass-throughs. And by the way, there currently isn't any sharing. The tenants are paying it all. So that's what we're not doing. We're not getting rid of pass-throughs. We're getting rid of crazy increases. Who was the easiest group of people to protect, as Nicole said? The people it hasn't happened to yet. So we start and work backwards. So those of you that came in expecting this to be the ultimate night of pass-through talk to, through the ages to end all nights, stick around. We're doing this and then I hope we have a very active board discussion following item 11A about how we proceed forward. Because I've been doing this a long time. Uh, I recognize this is somewhat like emergency legislation. But um, I look forward to a discussion later as to how we need to proceed and um, the length that it needs to take, et cetera, et cetera. Because we're at breakneck speed here. And I think some of you are witness to what can happen when we go at breakneck speed, riding off on our white horse with our white hat, there's a little bit of confusion. And we aren't anywhere close to solving this issue tonight. So those of you who are here to speak in opposition, you know, take it easy. Those of you who are here worried we're not taking care of everybody, be patient because this is just the beginning but this needed to happen because we needed to say, we needed to put our stake in the ground and say, okay, this has got to stop February 1st, or this has got to stop March 1st, then we're, we're going to work backwards. So I just want to make sure that's clear to everybody. Now, uh, some of us have been working on this issue for quite a long time. Um, I've been here and concerned about pass-through since 2010. It's okay. Um, I, I was co-author of Measure GA in 2012, uh, Bill Winslow and I, thought that the general adjustment formula was a bit wacky. It was taking up a lot of staff time where the staff could have been out serving people, uh, both landlords and tenants alike, and instead they were doing kinds of all kinds of new math. It's, uh, and um, we came up with me Measure GA, which I, at the time, we were given the impression was also going to sort of kind of settle the future of pass-throughs. Um, and it turns out it hasn't, I guess, done that. Um, and I wanted, and forgive me, uh, staff, because I did miss the last meeting. And while I watched it on TV, I had a bit of a fever, and I probably remember every third word. Um, can, despite the staff report's attempts, can uh, staff remind me a little bit of why Measure GA uh, doesn't necessarily settle the issue of pastors, but in fact actually may have in unwittingly increased our need to clarify language. Because at the time, I, mean, I have to tell you as the co-author, I'm, I'm sorry it may have in fact even made things worse. Uh, we know it's helped rents, but uh, I'm just curious how that plays in here this evening. And going forward generally. Well, um, in my, my legal opinion is that it did settle the issue and that it um, it uh, took away the ability to permit pastors. Um, so I believe it was clear. Yeah. It, okay. So well, your, your, the report seemed to state as such. Uh, let me rephrase. Yes, the, you were not unclear, but it seems that the language of Measure GA being as clear as you find it doesn't seem to be clear enough to certain members of the public. Um, is that a, a fair assessment or, in other words, that appears to be true. I can't really say what's in the public's mind, but that appears to be true. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Well, I'll just leave, you know what, I'm going to save most of my discussion for, uh, most of my thoughts for the healthy discussion. I hope we have, um, Madam Chair following, um, measure, um, uh, uh item 11A. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Tarosis. Okay, first of all, I do, I, I do want to thank everyone for coming and for weighing in. I know that, you know, it's not always easy to do that. And I also just want to thank everyone who's engaged me um, 
outside of this body, um, I, you know, I really think that a public participation process is important. I think that, you know, everyone has their own experiences to bring to the table that we need to be considerate of, and I don't discount anyone. Um, with that being said, I think that when you reach a compromise, it's never an easy solution. It's never one that's going to satisfy 100% of the people. And like I said last uh, two weeks ago, I think, you know, we just have to do the best that we can to um, represent the interests of the public that elected us uh, in the most equitable way that, that we can. And I understand that not everyone thinks uh, what's being proposed here uh, is in their best interest or the most equitable. Um, but again, to not sound like a broken record, um, you know, it's my personal opinion that doing this on a going forward, on a prospective basis, um, first, as the first step in tackling this issue, uh, made the most sense, i.e., Oh no, I E <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, you know, like I like I've already said, when you are a landlord, you're entering into this as a business endeavor. And I know we've talked a lot about protecting our small businesses, protecting our really great small landlords, because um, great landlords make uh, for happy tenants, and that always makes us here on the rent control board happy. Um, and so we want to make sure that no one who is currently uh, owning a building is is going to be affected by this. Again, this is on a going forward basis. Uh, and to, to take this into account when purchasing a building, to take it into account when offering the price that you are willing to pay for a building and how much revenue you're looking to bring in as a result of this. Um, also, uh, I, I want to just make a couple of comments on the actual language that we saw um, that, that concerns me because my intent here, again, is to do this on a going forward basis. So if we look on page four, um, we, it says proposed regulation 3120C specifies that the new tenancy to which it would apply are those that began since the last time the board allowed the imposition of an annual general adjustment, September 1st, 2017. So to me, um, the way that I read this, it could apply to tenancies that are already in effect, and that is uh, not my intent. Um, I understand that they wouldn't be affected until the next general adjustment. I do get that. Um, but I think that it's not fair uh, to me to uh, put if we if we truly want to do this on a prospective basis to affect any tenancies that are already in in place i think we we can only do it to tendencies on a going forward basis so so um general counsel lewis here how uh could we solve this problem if it is the consensus of the board that that is a problem um then whoever makes a motion to uh, adopt the regulations. If that's the only amendment, then the motion would be to adopt them as written with whatever that amendment may be. Yeah, so I would um, ask the board to consider um, potentially amending this language because, again, this means that uh, any tenancies that were started after September 1st, 2017 are affected, and that's not what we intend. I, and I understand, you know, your position is that the, the rent uh, levels wouldn't change until September or until our next general adjustment. But um, I, I don't feel comfortable with this. I don't think that this is in the spirit of what I would like to see. I would ask that we um, put the date of the new tenancies with the same effective date of the sale of the buildings. Um, and to that point, uh, this, this might not be the consensus of the group. Um, as someone who's been involved in, in very extensive public uh, processes where you are rolling out new uh, regulations, new codes, uh, and, and, and new requirements that the public is subject to that they're not familiar with. I personally think um, that it is you would almost be pulling the wool over some people's eyes um, if we did this on February 1st, um, because I think that we need to have enough time to educate the public as to what is coming here um, and what this means. Uh, because although we need to do this really quickly to make sure that people are protected, we don't want to do it in a way that's so quick that um, we're not being uh, methodical and thoughtful about what we're doing. And, and again, you know me, broken record, public engagement, outreach, and education is really important. And I think that for landlords to be able to prepare 
for tenants to know about what their rights and responsibilities are under these new regulations and for, for us to be reasonable for staff to roll this out. Um, I don't think that February 1st is appropriate. I think that's a little bit irresponsible, actually. Um, and I honestly don't know that I feel that uh, even March 1st is enough time. Um, so I would entertain a discussion amongst the board members here as to what's reasonable to actually roll this out, um, educate our affected parties um, so that everyone's on board and so that we don't need to worry about um, helping bring people into compliance after the fact so that we can have 100% um, compliance from day one. And, and I do have other comments about what we do in phase two, but I'll, I'll wait for that. Very well. Uh, Commissioner Duran. Thank you. So uh, I want to start by saying uh, thank you to Commissioner Phyllis for, I think, really uh, crystallizing what we are trying to do this evening and making clear uh, to the public uh, what we are not doing this evening. I think it's very important. I think it allays a lot of uh, fears, uh, at least um, hopefully. So um, one comment that I had put myself in the queue for to to discuss was actually what Commissioner Trosis had, had mentioned. It was a point of confusion for me as well um, in terms of the, the, the language uh, with the date September 1st, 2017. So I, I would agree with Commissioner Trosis um, that you know, this should be completely uh, moving forward perspective and uh, clear up any language that might lead to that ambiguity. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, those are all my comments for now. But oh, oh there's one, one other thing. As to uh, what Commissioner Trosis uh, mentioned last in regard to um, when do we start this, whether it be February 1st, March 1st, or some other date, um, I think what I'd like to at least put out there for, for my colleagues um, here is that, you know, we're talking about prospective and we're talking about new tenants and changes that happen after this. And so um, I'm not so worried about the notice for existing and current um, people because I, I believe that um, as new tenants are coming along, they'll have that opportunity to get educated because I would think if they're reasonable, they're going to want to look at what they're getting into before they get into it. And so it'll make them aware with whatever uh, information we provide. If they are in tune to it, they will see it. And so um, delaying this for a great deal longer, I don't think is, is necessary. Um, I think it's reasonable to, to start if we wanted to wait until March 1st. I think that's reasonable. Um, that gives us a little over a month to, to put out whatever information we can. Um, having said that, um, those are all my comments for now. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Duran. Um, I'm going to start my comments with a question to staff. The info sheet that we implemented um, in 2017 how quickly could a change to that for both, and I'm just, it's a narrow scope of a question, it doesn't address everybody, but for new tenancies, since they are handing out this sheet at the time of lease signing anyway, how quickly could we implement a change in the info sheet that would contain this information for new tenancies? Well, we could make a change to the information sheet and send it with a letter to all of the property owners. Um, that's what we did last summer. Uh, we included it in our summer mailing. Uh, so we could do that within the month before March 1st, I believe. We could also, when we do our next newsletter, we can certainly have this be a major article in the newsletter, but we cannot produce a newsletter and have it mailed to people by March 1st. We usually do um, the spring newsletter later in March, and that's what we're intending to do. So the notice to all of the tenants um, would go out with the newsletter, but we could mail directly to current owners um, during the month of February. Thank with, you. With a new information with sheet. With a new information sheet, which, which could be updated how quickly? We can update that pretty quickly. Thank yeah. you. So I'm, I'm also comfortable with a sooner rather than later, but not too soon implementation because um, unless I'm persuaded otherwise, I, I do feel that 
considering that any new tenancies that start, if there were to be a lag in communication or understanding on the part of property owners as to which tenancies they may not apply, you know, this to, um, it gives them until the following year when they would have implemented it on a new tenancy anyway to get the message. So I'm not concerned about that category of the new regulation having any problem with starting March 1st. Um, the part of the regulation concerning building turnover or reassessment. Um, what kind of response have you had to direct mailings to owners in the past? Well, when we mail out the newsletter or any communication, we always have an uptick in calls. So, but I don't know, I can't say response rate because I don't know exactly how many, but um, we always get questions following any of our direct mailings. Okay. So as long as the staff doesn't have um, a, a compelling factoid about uh, in, a burdensome cost to mailing all the owners or a burdensome uh, task of effectively fielding all of their questions or phone calls, um, I, I would also support a potential uh, March 1st implementation. Um, and I see that we have some other uh, commissioners in the queue who wish to speak, so I'm going to reserve the rest of my comments for after they speak. And Commissioner Flora. Yes, thanks you uh, for indulging me for another question. This, this just came up uh, as I was thinking about the March 1st date, which I agree with. I, I agree with Commissioner Tarosis, uh to even suggest February 1st doesn't even seem like open governance to me. Um, I, I recognize that the staff was simply trying to com comply with our wishes to do this quickly. Uh, that I know that was not their intent, but I know it can, would be taken as some, and rightly so, as not very transparent. But I do think March 1st is you know, our, a, a very fair line in the sand. It allows more than 30 days. Uh, but I want to make sure that we're not going to get in trouble or there's not going to be a lot of mystery out there or a lot of legal, you know, mishigas uh, uh, over the word sale. In other words, uh, uh, a, a, a escrow starts January 10th and ends March 10th. Where does that property fall in this uh, measure 11A? Well, a sale occurs when it's completed, not when it's being negotiated. Got it. So, so it would only be after escrow closed. Okay, and that's me just not being knowledgeable enough. That's a understood thing. Okay, all right. Thanks for indulging. <laughs> Those are your comments. Uh, yeah. No, I, I with that I support. Uh, I, I would certainly support any motion that m would move forward with a recommendation. F uh, for the amendment changes with the alternative recommendation of March 1st. Commissioner Phyllis. Uh, so I strongly encourage my fellow commissioners to adopt a March 1st implementation date. Um, and I'm prepared to make a motion whenever uh, the board is ready, but the motion, um, so the motion would include the draft language proposed by staff. Um, with the following amendments, just to be clear, uh, the amendments would be um, to section, proposed section 3120. Can you give a page number, please, so we can follow along? It's seven to eight, so it's 3120. Um, and when we talk about the implementation date beginning February, uh, beginning um, March 1st, no surcharge may be added to a unit's rent other than a charge to recover 50% of registration fees as permitted um, for any unit with an initial rent that was established on or after March 1st, 2018. And then, so that's section 1320, um, C, subdivision C. Yep. And then um, section 1320, subdivision D, 1 and 2. 
would change uh, February 1 to, in both sections, to March 1st. Um, and just to kind of assuage some of my fellow commissioners' concerns about uh, notice and about community engagement um, and about implementation. So we started discussing this item back in November. Um, that's at least, or at least publicly discussing. I mean, I know Commissioner Flora, Commissioner Foster have been working on pass-throughs as very important items to them for years. Um, and I'm really proud of us all for coming together as a board and building consensus around this. Um, and, and so, you know, I think, what, November, December, January, February, March, that's five, at least five months of, of ongoing public discussion. We've engaged uh, landlords, we've engaged the tenant rights community, um, we've had, you know, multiple public hearing, or this is a public hearing, um, we'll have discussion at the next meeting. I think a March 1st implementation date provides, uh, or effective date provides sufficient notice um, without incur or risking the potential for um, encouraging sell-offs or encouraging um, increased sale activities. I wanna also remind uh, my fellow commissioners that one of the <clears throat> main criteria that we see prior to Ellis activity is turnover and ownership of a building. Um, and I think, you know, one, one point that I didn't make um, prior to this discussion, but one point that, that you know, I, I, I do think is worth making is that I, I view this regulation change as supporting the retention of existing, the supporting of the retention of buildings by long-term landlords because it rewards those landlords with the incremental increases permitted by uh, Prop 13 and allows them to continue to um, pass through, you know, initial in some of these pass through these surcharges um, while uh, be while holding on to their buildings. Um, so I, th I, you know, I I do view it as supporting our, you know, our our landlord, uh, our current landlord community. And I think um, that that was very important to me in thinking this through. Um, so uh, I, I, I think, you know, I've, I've had multiple discussions with people about it. I, I agree, I hear the concerns of my fellow commissioners. I hear the concern. Look, if it were me, I would want February 1st. <laughs> so, so March 1st is a concession. <laughs> But I'm I'm willing to kind of get there to build consensus, which is something you know. This has been a long time coming. I just it breaks my heart every, and I know it breaks the heart of everyone else on this board to hear more tenants. And I think if we push out much, who who've been implemented by these surcharge increases, I think if we push it out much later than March first, we're going to hear more of it. Um, so so, uh, I I, I believe there's a motion that you've made, correct? Uh, I'm prepared to make a motion. You stated it with amendments already. Yeah, I but I, I, I just said I was prepared to make it. If I didn't want to cut anyone else off in the queue. Okay. Um, so I'm prepared to make it. All right, so um, Commissioner Tarosis has her name in the queue. Do you have further discussion on this item before I a motion do. is made? Or Yeah, I mean, I uh, to me, agreeing to March 1st would be a, a compromise. Um, and again, you know, I, I don't know if it's just because I'm bringing my own personal experience to this. Um, but again, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm here elected uh, to do this based off of, you know, the experience that I bring to the table. Um, I, I think that uh, to, it's one thing to say we've been talking about this since November and even before that, like in, in different um, interest groups in the community. Um, and. Fortunately, we have really great uh, landlords and tenants that come to every single meeting and who opine on this and who have engaged us. But I would think for the preponderance of the landlord and tenant community, um, it's going to be a big lift for staff to let them uh, to let them know about this. Um, so I think we are already uh, going at a very quick pace to say that in a, in a month and a week, uh, we're ready to implement this. Uh, I, I think that, um, you know, we assume that everyone knows because we've been talking about it. Um, I, I think that's a big assumption and you know what happens when people make assumptions. So um, 
you know, I, 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 I'm hearing that uh, March 1st is what's comfortable for people. I would feel more comfortable with, with something closer to April 1st, but I, again, don't want to incentivize the sale of buildings um, in, in a quick manner or any other negative repercussions. I don't think that there would be those, but... Um, Sorry, there's a little, there's a lot of activity happening here. Um, so, you know, that's one thing that I, I don't know um, that I'm 100% comfortable with. A another thing, I, I think if we are going to do this on March 1st, the only way that I would feel comfortable is if we do more than just like a mailing, um, right? We heard uh, the gentleman here say we need an email listserv. Um, I've been saying that since day one that I got here. I know that staff is working on and we have a technology subcommittee on working to upgrade our technology here. Um, I, I don't know that we're ready for this rollout, but you know, if, if we have an email send, we can quickly see what kind of response rate we're getting. We're con we can see if people click on links. We can potentially automate some of our processes. We can get these things out more quickly. Um, we can do some sort of social media presence as well. I mean, I just think that we need to take all of these things into consideration, and I know I keep saying that, but I'm really serious about it. Um, we, I think we need to get with uh, you know, 20, 2018 and use all of our technological tools in our tool belt um, and that's the only way that I would feel comfortable with doing this very quickly. Uh, and then another thing that I would like to see amended, um, in on page eight, 3120 uh, sub, sorry, B3, I would like to strike that um, for, for a variety of reasons. Uh, I, I just don't know that, that that clause is necessary. I'm fine with striking that. Um, so I would ask staff to weigh in because I just want to be assured from legal staff that that doesn't substantively change what the public has debated and commented on and what we've discussed so far. No, it does not. Clear enough. Um, so uh, is there more discussion by Commissioner Phillips or are you wanting to make I'm your... I'm prepared to make a motion. All right, and uh, with... Okay. So, so I move that we adopt uh, uh, regulations proposed in Exhibit B with the following amendments. Strike, uh, so sorry, amend or, or change uh, uh, so strike subdivision B3, amend section C to say beginning uh, March 1st, 2018 for tenancies uh, for any unit with an initial rent that was established on or after March 1st, 2018. And then uh, D1 uh, change February 1 to March 1 and D2 change February 1 to March 1. And that is my motion. Do we have a second? Second. So, uh, uh, very quickly, b before we vote, I just want to indicate that we did receive a late shit on this item and that typically the board would not finish their resolution uh, to vote on an item without hearing from all uh, uh, of the public who wish to speak. And I am always a huge fan of always accepting late chits unless there's a specific problem with doing that. However, I am precluded. I don't have a procedure for being able to accept this shit, and I just wanted the speaker to understand that in a public hearing, the rules are slightly different and that late shits are not uh, able to be considered by the board. So I apologize for not being able to do that procedurally. And so we will now uh, take a roll call vote. Commissioner Trosis? Yes. Commissioner Flora? Yes. Commissioner Duran? Yes. Commissioner Phyllis? Yes. Commissioner Foster? Yes. Motion carries. So I just want to also clarify, um, I, I want to be a really tight parliamentarian this year. That's my goal. And so uh, for the record, I want to restate um, draft language as proposed by staff with the amendments to strike B3, change March 1st in item C, and change to March 1st items 1 and 2, subsections of section D. And that has been voted on and passed by this body. Now, before, so I, I want to next say that staff has indicated to the chair <clears throat> that they, at this time, would be asking for further clarification um, as to our future calendar. And because we don't have another item on the agenda with which to work, I'm going to take this moment to ask for, 
to see if I can gather consensus from this board as to something. Um, it has been a, a scant two weeks since our previous discussion of this, and it will be a scant one week until staff is able to cobble together their wonderful staff report for the February 8th meeting in the interest of public noticing of a week advance notice of the February 8th agenda and staff report. So everyone in this room, everyone watching at home, stakeholders in the community, uh, and everyone on this dais and staff know that we need to, um, things have been raised, they're out there, so we're going to talk about them. There's definitely gonna be discussion. Uh, but what I would um, ask for consensus among my fellow board members would be the following, that we be deliberate, that we honor the process, that we give ample time um, to hear from stakeholders. And someone very wise once said, I want it bad, but I don't, I don't want it so bad that I want it bad. So what I wanna say is this, for this board obviously, because we just voted five to nothing to do it, was a clear cut issue uh, for this group. Um, but going forward, there could be a million different uh, variables, stakeholders, considerations, context, history, and uh, analysis. So I would just implore the board to, uh, my fellow board members to proceed uh, to a strict adherence of the introduction of administrative items or board discussion items uh, on future agendas and to take time to consult with constituents uh, and take their own counsel uh, over time and to bring, uh, just so the public knows, any individual board member may bring a board item for a discussion item uh, to a future agenda. And also with a consensus of the board, meaning three or more, uh, individual direction can be given to staff if, if consensus is reached on something more specific. So what I'm, what I'm seeking consensus for is um, a consideration that the board has plenty of work to do at the February 8th meeting, just on our regular procedural items, and that we make certain that if any further deliber deliberation is to be taken up on any other items raised by the public, raised by stakeholders, raised by members of this board, that we take it in a, in a deliberative uh, fashion uh, that honors the process. And, and one of the main reasons uh, I have personally found to, that I want to do this is because um, while there may be some really experts in the field, whether it's in the schools or in landlord associations or tenant associations or citizens or board members or staff members, there may be some wonderful expertise as to what would be a good idea to do next or what we should try. Um, but if we, if we move too quickly, there's a danger that the public won't have time to grasp and, and to research and wrap their minds around uh, their thoughts on, on those issues or regulatory language or, um, discussion opportunities or public hearings. So uh, what I'm suggesting is that we find some consensus outside of, because we don't have an agenda item with which to have a discussion tonight. We do have the ability to find some consensus to direct the staff as to when uh, we would talk about this again in either a study session or in a subcommittee of any kind. So uh, I am proposing that we absolutely talk about it in February, but maybe February is we talk about what we wanna talk about. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking for consensus in a brief discussion uh, outside of any agenda item with which to do so to talk about next steps. Uh, Commissioner Trosis is in the queue. Okay, like everyone knows, I brought up last time, uh, this is the first step amongst a multi-step process. Um, I was very concerned at the last meeting, much to the comments that we received tonight. What? Do, okay, yes, we're doing this on a prospective basis, um, but how do we account for potentially uh, disadvantaged tenants uh, as a result of these um, astronomically high surcharges uh, and also, 
how do we make sure that we're protecting landlords who have uh, a, a number of long-term tenants, um, not not market rate tenants? Because I know we say, you know, when you have a new tenancy, you can set the rent um, and take into account these surcharges. But, but we know from our staff report from um, two months ago or last month that th there are some landlords that have a lot of long-term tenants as well. So um, I, I don't want anyone to think that we are not going to consider that and I had brought up the idea of this two-pronged test just as like a, a, a throwing it out there as, as one option of how we determine how we deal with this I don't know that that's a good idea or the best approach um, and I think it, it's really important uh, to engage many stakeholders many experts people who can guide and advise us um, on how to deal with this much more difficult issue uh, if we choose to do anything. So I would propose uh, to staff, everyone knows I'm in, really in favor of these subcommittees, um, especially ones that meet on Saturdays. Uh, I, I would propose uh, that we form either a subcommittee or we have a, a series of special uh, informational meetings to engage with uh, the public and also potentially appointed subject matter experts. Um, potentially each commissioner could appoint um, one or two subject matter experts on this topic to an advisory body that then convenes um, and comes up with a, some sort of framework for which we can consider this, brings it back to the board, we deliberate. I, I, I'm, again, happy to hear from others, but um, I really think that we need to have some outside experts uh, weigh in on this so we're not just in an echo chamber and I think that this is a much more difficult topic uh, that we have to tackle so I would like to see that happen um, and I don't know that we're ready to set anything for discussion at a meeting if in fact we do have an advisory body and a subcommittee but um, I have plenty of other topics that I'd like to see discussed at our next meeting. Okay, uh, Commissioner Flora. Thank you. Um, I, I really appreciate what uh, Chairwoman Foster tried to do here, um, and that is you're really trying to uh, get us to see the whole chessboard. And I think that that's going to require us to um, s pause in the healthiest ways. Um, I think, um, I, you know, it's funny. One of our uh, wonderful uh, members of the public said earlier, I hope I'm quoting you correctly, I don't really know what I'm doing here except I want to help the people. I've felt that way for seven years. <laughs> and, um, but I do know what I'm doing here, but it, it, it wasn't something I really planned on doing until shortly before the 2010 campaign. And I have to say, it's uh, been a huge part of my life since. And I, I will tell you, one of the things I've learned, I brought with Bill Winslow, then a, a commissioner, Measure GA forward for the 2012 ballot. It was my second year on the Right Control Board. And... I can tell you, I wouldn't have done anything different. I don't think we brought it forward too quickly, given that it was on a two-year cycle. But I will say, looking back, <clears throat> as I was thinking about this item, and I was even reminded by another um, commissioner who'd studied the, the item, we took months, I mean months, to study ways around a formula that nobody liked. Nobody liked it, but we took the time it needed. So it's time to put the deliberative back in deliberate. If you can switch that around a little bit. In other words, it's great to want to race around and, uh, you know, I think I trust the public to be patient And to want them to make sure we do the right thing, even if it takes a month or two longer, than to, again, go off on our white horse with our white hats and talk about meeting on the weekends, look how much we care about you, and get something wrong because we went so quickly because look at how much we care about you. Everybody here 
very much cares about the landlords in this community and the tenant sorry the tenants in this community and the renters in this community and yes the landlords too but let's let's make sure we are deliberating and those that we rely on to get us the right information our overworked staff has enough time to get us the information um i missed the january 11th meeting yes. because i was ill and i have to say as pleased as i am to be back tonight i was a little surprised that the, the insistence that that this meeting happened tonight it's great that it did for what we were trying to do but those of you that haven't been here as long as I, take my word for it. Um, yes, the public needs us to act, but it took us a long time to get through Measure GA, and I'm now learning there were apparently unintended or unclear consequences for something that we took months on. We talked to other cities about how they did general adjustments. We took the time to call people in Berkeley and we got something that we were proud to pass through the public. Let's make sure that even though this may be an administrative item, that when we're getting things to a phase of an actual public hearing or we're saying, oh, oh, administrative item, administrative item, I've got one. Let's make sure that we're giving ourselves and the staff enough time to do this right and to gather information and to slow down enough ourselves to think of the right questions before they race past us because we're in such a hurry. And I'll leave it at that and just thank the chairwoman again for stating what kind of year you want to have here, which is one where we really try to get a sense for what our other colleagues are thinking and don't just, you know, leap before we look. So I'll leave it at that. And well, and with that, I would uh, my only direction for the staff would be to tell us when you think it would be within your bandwidth to even have a discussion item again of, say, historical context on this issue. Maybe we go back to the beginning now and say, okay, starting in 2012, historical context. You tell us when that could even be possible, and let's, you know, inch forward with, you know, a brisk but not unhealthy pace. All right, I think I've said enough, uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Thank you, Chairperson Flora. And I just wanted to check in before we go uh, around again, if Commissioner Duran has any thoughts you'd like to, to jump in before we go around again. Not at this time, thank you very much. You have it? Uh, my apologies, my apologies to Commissioner Phyllis. I confused it with the previous debate. Please, Commissioner Phyllis. Thanks. Um, so I appreciate the comments uh, from uh, Chair Foster and uh, Commissioner Flora, also former chair. Look, I let's let's be serious and fair and open about what we're talking about. I understand that there have been uh, concerns from members of the public that this may have unintended consequences. And I understand that there have been concerns from members of the public, including council members, that uh, we are moving too quickly on this item. I've also heard um, uh, that there is some anxiety about the pace with which we are moving. Um, and, and I want to assure my fellow commissioners that I'm sensitive to that as, as well. Uh, in, you know, in no way, I think this is a, is a quick and dirty fix, you know, qu quite to the contrary. I think especially on the issues concerning retroactivity, we want to get it right. Um, however, I don't necessarily think taking uh, a, an unduly long time will ensure that we get it right. Um, I know that I also have been the one kind of prodding us to move this quickly along. So I recognize my role in the process. Uh, I recognize, <laughs> you know, that that um, I probably was the one who was most ready to implement this on February 1. And that's because we've had members of our tenant community telling us now for years that they're losing their homes. We've seen, you know, nearly 3,000 units affected by this. Um, 
and I'm I'm incredibly happy and so grateful that we could do this unanimously tonight. And I think ultimately that should be the goal for a moving forward action. Um, and I and I feel like it's it's doable among us uh, because this is something that, when done properly, you know, will serve all members of the community. Um, and and will promote the ultimate purpose of rent control, which is you know, ensuring stability and security uh, for tenants. Um, and, um, but but I, I, I just, I wanna make a few points about the comparisons to measure GA and why I think urgency is, is a bit more pointed here. Measure GA, as many of the folks here know, and as I know one of Measure GA's authors know, concerns the way that we calculate the general adjustment. There's no dispute over whether there is a general adjustment. There is no dispute over whether we're going to have rent control or not. There was a dispute over basically the way that we calculate it and a shift in the way that we calculate it. There was not a massive incremental hundreds of dollars change for tenants that could result in tenants losing their homes, right? So I, under, I also understood Measure GA was a ballot measure. So there's a there's a very specific deliberative process where you want to get stakeholders, you want to build community support, you want to have authors and different stakeholders in the community signing on because you know there's going to be uh, an opposition, a printed opposition, and you know that you're going to have to get a certain number, you're going to have to engage basically the entire community to understand this measure and to vote on it. This is something that's, that's different from GA in that one, I think we are at crisis levels. We've heard from these tenants, people are literally losing their homes and they've been losing their homes since 2012. There are 3000 units, right? That have been affected by this where these costs are really, really going up. Now, not every tenant is losing their home, but I guarantee you there are tenants who are losing their homes. So, you know, I think we've implemented a very good stopgap measure I'm incredibly happy that we could do it unanimously. And I think the goal is to, to implement any future measures concerning uh, sharing of pass-throughs, retroactivity unanimously. But you know, people are continuing to pay hundreds of dollars in excess of what they were previously paying. And so it's, it's, it's a little bit different than GA in that respect. Um, the other thing I want to say is we have acted quickly on other measures before, using the example of owner occupancy um exemptions you know i think we started talking about that and within maybe six months implemented a new program where owner occupancy exemptions lapsed as a matter of law right and that was because we were concerned about potential abuses with that process we we're co concerned about what would happen if people are basically subverting the process of rent control when they aren't entitled to an owner occupancy exemption so so i'm just saying doing this over you know, a six month period seems fairly reasonable to me, um, you know, like, a, but I think we have to also recognize that we are vested with the public trust and I don't want to, um, and I don't want to, and I, and I know that my fellow commissioners don't want to do this either. I think we, we, we need to be very conscious to strike an appropriate balance between taking time and encouraging community engagement and encouraging stakeholders to participate um, and also recognizing that like every month that we don't pass something is a month where people are paying hundreds of dollars they you know, are, may not have um, if they can keep their homes at all. And, and that is really concerning to me. Uh, and we've been hearing about it for years. I mean, I, not to, to beat a dead horse, but you know, we, I hope everyone had a chance to review the correspondence that we have on our dais because we have members of the public literally telling us this is not a case of better late than never, okay? Like, th this has been a long time coming. Um, and so I'm happy to play the role <laughs> of being the one to push us to move faster because I think this is a crisis, this continues to be a crisis, and this continues to be a crisis for the members of the public who've continued to come and speak at our meetings about how they can't afford these rent increases. And, um, and, and so I, I think timeliness is, is particularly sensitive and important here. So I encourage my, I know my fellow commissioners will consider that, but just to, to 
to remind my fellow commissioners of why it's so important to me and to kind of share those concerns, I think, um, is important. Thank you, Commissioner Phyllis. So, uh, uh, Commissioner Duran, I'm going to ask if you would like to chime in on this part of the conversation. We And I'd like to remind um, the board that we don't have an agenda item to discuss this, but it, this is a very valuable discussion to staff uh, to, to get direction going forward as to content and timing. Uh, and, and we do want to hear back from you, uh, perhaps before we adjourn, as to your thoughts on potential timetables after we hear from Commissioner Duran and any other um, commissioners who wish to speak. Okay, thank you. Well, what I'm hearing, it sounds like, um, is that we have, uh, I think, a, 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 I think everyone's made their points, and I think what, what's been established is we have some of, some of us who are willing to push faster and some of us who uh, want to um, slow things down so that there's ample time for deliberation and thoughtfulness. Um, not to say that someone who pushes quickly isn't also being deliberate and thoughtful. Um, but what I think it, the end result is, is that you have opposing forces that will uh, result with compromise and measured reasonableness, right? If you have someone who wants to go slower, someone who wants to go faster, if you're going to get anything done, you're going to have to find a compromise. And, I, and so I think the way it's set up, at least to the topic as to how fast things should come about, um, is, is set up in a way currently where where both pushing against each other is going to is going to come to a, a, a reasonable dis decision. I think that was um, that was shown here tonight um, with with uh, some of us wanting a, a faster uh, start time and some of us wanting a slower start time and and what ended up happening was a compromise um, so the result was i think deliberate and it was reasonable and it was all sides pushing their their positions forward but coming to a, a reasonable conclusion so um i like what i'm hearing i like that i'm hearing people who who want to move quickly and people who want to slow <coughs> things down um, because I think that the effect of that is, is going to come to um, smart decisions. So I, I guess those are those are only my, my comments. And the, I guess the other comment I would say was would be that um, without any kind of guiding, it, it, it's too speculative at this point to really put um, deadlines or procedures in place other than to set a tone as to what the expectations are. And I, and I think we've done a good job of doing that. Those are my comments. All right, thank you. Before, So everyone's had a chance to speak once, and I'm not saying we're not going to speak a, a bit more, but uh, both myself and Commissioner Tarosas had proposed gathering consensus around uh, some specific action, which, which might be uh, forming a subcommittee, uh, and or defining a timetable or timeline for a prospective uh, study session, is it fair to say that the next regular meeting of February 8th, noticing of which and staff report of which has to be produced one week from today, is the, is the first available time to do a, a, study, a, a first study session or administrative item? Of clarification, yeah, point of clarification, you, you, we don't need to notice it. I mean, it's 72 hours for a regular meeting, so we have, I, I think we have ample time. I, none of us, I don't know if you've seen the, the putative agenda for the next meeting, but I certainly have not. So I have no idea what we have in store, what, you know, uh, appeals. So, what, okay, thank you. So so just a moment. We, we don't have anything uh, putative for the next agenda. So what we are doing now is giving staff collective and consensus direction on a couple of things. Next steps, what category they fall under, does an individual board member at a, at a future date tomorrow, next week, want to approach staff with a board discussion item? Does the board tonight want to form consensus around a subcommittee? Do we want to set the parameters for things we might start talking about on February 8th and and set a, a tentative 
looking forward, progressive, progressive and efficient schedule for how we're going to talk about this. Okay. Commissioner Tarosas. Like to talk. Okay. So oh, in shit. hearing all of this um, and crystallizing my thoughts, uh, this is what I propose. Um, I would like to see us, and, and I'm happy to entertain other comments, um, convene a surcharge advisory group comprised of technical experts. Each board member would get three appointees to that group. Um, Stephen Lewis is not happy with that idea. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not going to opine about whether it's a good idea, but... but it would be a brown act body, I know. Yes, it would be a brown act body. I understand. Yeah, yeah I understand. Um, I know any uh, appointee of us. Yeah, I understand. Right, and it's also before even suggesting that it's fine to suggest talking about it. Yeah, but um, right. This is but, this is what I like. Okay. I would like to do, okay. and I'm not done. Um, so I would like to see uh, a group of technical experts. Um, I would like to see staff come back to us um, with a proposal for how we might effectuate this. Um, ideally, I would uh, like this group of technical experts to return to this board within 90 days with a set of recommendations pursuant to their public engagement process. I would like this uh, board of technical experts um, to come from academia, to come from stakeholder groups, to come from the landlord community, to come from the tenant community, um, community college, um, etc. our partners here across the city uh, and then they would come back to us with recommendations to consider uh, at a study session where we would have the opportunity to hear uh, and critique opine on um, review those recommendations uh, with members of the public and ourselves uh, at that meeting um, I would love to hear other comments um, and then additionally I have three other items that uh, I'm interested in hearing back from uh, from staff on um, and I, I'm happy to because they're not related specifically to this topic I'm happy to give you direction on that after this or, or not thank you Commissioner <laughs> Tarosas. Um so again our choices are forming some sort of consensus here tonight uh, with at least three members of the board to to move forward with direction to staff or uh, to um, contemplate uh, uh, either either now or after some uh, contemplation uh, potential discussion items for a future agenda so uh, Commissioner Flora do you have a thought on consensus can I get some uh, sorry can I get some clarification on what you're asking us to ask so the staff for I on February. So, yeah, sure. So, so as a new chairperson, I tried to work really hard. Yeah, <laughs> no, and I complimented rushing up on on procedure because we know, as a body and as a city, that this is a large issue, multifaceted issue, and um, as as a chair of this body, I am trying to be deliberative and and efficient and uh, cognizant of the public's concerns, the stakeholders' concerns and staff's concerns with giving us uh, robust and well thought out information. So what we're, we need to limit our actions to either what's on the agenda tonight well, or our other tools are forming consensus for general direction for the next agenda or individual board members bringing forth well reasoned, thought out board discussion items. Right. Could be I, tomorrow, could I, be next week. And, my, cetera, and my question still hasn't been answered. I wasn't kidding when I asked the staff to tell us what in another two weeks they think they even have time for a write-up on maybe we don't agendize anything as you said madam chair maybe we don't agendize anything for february 8th other than what do we want to talk about exactly so can staff i really would like the staff because i would like quite frankly you know thank you steve for your comments about you know really kind of guiding us to the Taoist middle, uh, but in all sincerity, um, and to my fellow commissioners, I, I promise, and I think it's important that we respect each other going forward, I promise to not use loaded language like barreling forward recklessly, so long as, so long as I don't hear this phrase that I heard in November and December ever again, dragging our feet. So, um, 
I heard dragging our feet from at least one commissioner who I'm not looking at presently. Um, no, who I am looking at presently, excuse me. Um, but um, so back to, sorry, okay. humor aside, back let's, to let's the- Let's stay on topic. Back, back to the staff. I really, in order to answer your question, I need to hear an answer to mine. I'd like to hear from staff at this point uh, to answer Commissioner Flores' question. So the board tonight just adopted regulations in this subject matter. Um, it sounds from the discussion that has just been had that the board is interested in at least thinking about additional regulations in the same subject matter. And um, in order to know how much staff time would need to prepare for oh. some oh. to provide information about what you need to know to discuss that subject matter, um, staff needs to know what, really what that subject matter is. Um, and I'm not clear about that. So, so it's table tennis right now. <laughs> okay. So uh, thank you, staff. Um, and Commissioner Duran is next in the queue. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I mentioned this when I spoke last, and I think that um, as of right now, uh, it's the conversation we're trying to have is – is operating in my in my opinion is is operating in a vacuum and right, we don't have enough specifics that as things come up there will be specific things so that we can uh, uh, request of staff particular things but without having anything or any topic in mind right now it's 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 I feel kind of hard to uh, put in forth any sort of action um, other than an, an, an awareness that this is how we're going to act moving forward, that this is the goal that we want to achieve moving forward, um, that we set clear direction on a particular topic when it arises or when it comes to mind. Um, right now, I feel like everything's too speculative because we're not talking about a particular thing. Okay, Commissioner Phyllis. Okay, Commissioner Drawn, I like that uh, you are urging us to talk in terms of uh, concrete ideas. So. I have a proposal, a couple proposals. I think we should have a subcommittee. I think it should not be a Brown Act body, so we're going to need to have two commissioners on the subcommittee. I mean, I'm happy with it being a Brown Act body. Are we going to agree? Probably not. I'd like to be on it. I don't know. I'd like to be on it. <laughs> okay. So then it needs to be a Brown Act body, okay, which means we need to have publicly noticed meetings, which means that uh you know we're going to need staff support for those meetings uh we're also going to need a meeting space but i do think we need a subcommittee because there are and and if it's not going to be a, i mean i don't know how the, we do this but um i think we should have a subcommittee that's number one um i'm open to it being a brown act body or a non-brown act body i really want to be on it i feel very close to this item I know others do too, so you know I defer to voting on who gets to be on this subcommittee if that's how we have to resolve it, and that's fine. Um, I think in terms of a timeline, um, I think I, I, I think we probably need multiple public hearings and probably an administrative item or a board discussion item first. Um, I'm open to not having that be our February 8th meeting. I'm hearing Commissioner Foster. That's I'm not sure if that was the direction that you were suggesting or not. And, I'm, and I definitely do not mean to put words in your mouth. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, I'm not sure if you if you were saying that because the February 8th meeting is about two weeks away that um, that that you felt more comfortable with it not being a, a discussion and an, a public hearing. Or I'll, a, I'll clarify on my turn. Um, but uh, I would be fine with having a discussion item, maybe to get more clarification at the February 8th meeting, and then moving forward uh, with a uh, subcommittee or uh, with concrete feedback if we have to do it in a public, if we have to do it in a public meeting, um, moving forward. I also like the idea of, look, the Planning Commission meets m multiple times a month, Council meets multiple times a month. This is a very pressing item. I would support having a second meeting in February where if we're going to start discussing substantive changes, <laughs> sorry, Commissioner Flora, I do think 
a second meeting in February could be very helpful. I think we are going to have to do multiple meetings a month for the next few months to get this handled. I just don't think that one meeting a month is, is uh, frequent enough to fully address kind of the gravity of the items and to, in, to engage the members of the public and to engage the stakeholders. And having multiple meetings a month, if we can't have a subcommittee, will ensure that we can have Brown Act compliant discussion with all members of the board who are really interested in this item. And given how much interest there is on mm -hmm. uh, participating in, in a discussion of pass-throughs, I think maybe multiple meetings a month could be the alternative to a subcommittee. So those are my proposals. I encourage my fellow commissioners to bat them around as they see fit. But I think we either have a subcommittee and it's not a Brown Act body, or we have multiple meetings a month where there are multiple discussion items on this topic so that we can all engage in it in a Brown Act compliant way. Um, but I don't know that staff is going to be able to support a Brown Act subcommittee. Yeah, uh, well, okay. just, or just two meetings right. a month. So, I'm sorry oh. to interject, I'm sorry. Um, in order to, speaking of the Brown Act, in order to avoid the actuality or the potentiality of or the appearance of a Brown Act violation tonight, I just want to be clear that the board would not tonight be voting to, dis to establish a subcommittee. Right. The question is just, do you want in February 8th to discuss? Yes. Yes. Uh, I wasn't making a motion. No, I, was... I, know that, I know. I know. I just will clarify for the public that this is, this is we're, we're, Thank the, you, what's Stephen. happening tonight is not a discussion about what do we do. The, the, what's, the, the, what's being discussed is at the next meeting, what will we be discussing? And Thank you. So, so also is the, the next our, meeting is on February eighth. So our next regular meeting. Let me just chime back in here. I am next in the queue, and I want to point out our next regular meeting is in two weeks, uh, approximately two weeks on February eighth. So what I would propose before we go around and around and around is to let we've already gone around of almost twice. So let's let's pause, and let's ask if staff would bring back. I would like to look for consensus to have staff bring back on February 8th information regarding a subcommittee that's a non-Brown Act body, information regarding the formation of a Brown Act body and a, including Commissioner Tarosis's, uh wish list of the, of the technical advisors um, and an examination of, of Commissioner Phyllis's idea to have multiple public meetings. Um, this achieves what I wanted to achieve for my part, which was talking about talking about it. I think that's an, just an absolutely inherently healthy thing to do at the beginning of the process. And then if, it, if we can get a handle on it, like a rodeo horse, and, and, and ride it successfully through a, an expedited pace that makes sense, then so be it. Um, but but I would be comfortable with a February 8th discussion of how our future discussions are going to go. So I'm going to propose asking for consensus at this time, unless staff yes. has something to add. And procedurally, how do we how do we gain consensus procedurally right now? Do I have to ask for a vote, or is it a motion? Well, we don't have an agenda item. It's not an agenda. Right. We can only direct staff with a consensus of the board. So I'm asking Lonnie how I procedurally get consensus, or Stephen. Well, any individual member of the board can put something on the agenda. Correct. Um, but in order to, my understanding of what the board has just now been discussing, is in order not to spin your wheels of just having somebody put something on the agenda that nobody's going to have an interest in discussing. Um, it sounds like there is an interest in discussing three things. This is what I understand. Mm -hmm. um, um, what um, the establishment of a, of, a, of a subcommittee to consider further um, amendments to the surcharge regulations, the issue of the establishment of a uh, of, the, of an advisory body that would be a brown act body to con to advise the board or advise the subcommittee um, on further amendments to the surcharge regulations um, and the 
uh, degree to which staff can provide support for ad also additional, also or instead, or whatever the combination of that is, additional board meetings other than the once a month that we've been having. That, that's my understanding of what the board has been talking about just now, wanting a, re a, a, a brief report next week on. Point of personal privilege, just to inform my fellow commissioners because I think it's important. I currently have a conflict with the February 8th meeting. Um, so I would very much like to participate in a discussion, in the discussion moving forward. Um, and I would propose, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I just am putting that out there. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure I would ask my fellow commissioners to wait until March. So I would probably ask for a second February meeting. Um, but I also understand if that's not possible. But I, it's a really important discussion. It's a discussion I feel invested in. And are you proposing to change the date of the February eighth meeting, or are you talking about an additional monthly meeting? Uh, I'd be a open to month. either, but one that would allow me to participate in the discussion of this item. Well, now we're going on to the item we're supposed to be talking about on February 8th, about two, multiple meetings. Okay, well, no, so uh, everyone take a pause, just a moment. Um, so there's also an act uh, in the procedures about uh, calling an end, or asking for a, a drawdown to the discussion. Um, I believe it's clear that everybody obviously needs to keep fleshing this out and seeing what this what this is I think asking for the three things that council has has advised us they could look into Cut in case. one week and then 72 hours at least in front of uh, any future potential meeting talk to us about we have things we can yeah. we can talk about That'll and get the process busy. started um, now this this wrinkle of perhaps having a conflict with February 8th we'll have to take up off this dais as, as a body with, with staff. Staff, what say well, you? I just wanted to comment that I believe we have noticed um, some matters for the February 8th meeting. So I would recommend that if we wanted to add an additional meeting for February, that that might be um, preferable to changing the February 8th meeting. Um, but so, then we could, I believe, come back with the thing that uh, Chair Foster outlined for the February 8th meeting. But if we regularly have uh, multiple meetings established, then we can work in advance. If we're at a meeting saying what we're going to do two weeks from now, it gives us very short turnaround time mm -hmm. because we do prefer to provide staff reports to the public, uh, to you and the public, at least a week in advance. So when we have regularly scheduled, um, two meetings a month, we have more lead time to be mm -hmm. doing that work. So I think that's something worthy of discussing at the February 8th meeting, or if you want to wait and do that um, later, that can be done as well. Is it an appropriate time to, to move to ask that we agendize a second meeting in February? Yeah. yeah. So, is this a motion? You're making a formal motion um, to add a meeting. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I we, you, don't need a motion. you don't need a motion. Is it, but is there a con consent? I mean, it, it. I'm asking my fellow commissioners because it would allow me to participate. I realize that I this assent is for one. So that would be February 22nd if we wanted to be able to meet in the chambers. I'm sorry, Tom. I know you really it's don't want to. Listen, it's, it's listen. I, don't ever accuse me of not being willing to do the work it takes. No, no, that, no, that's don't not just don't do it. Order, you guys. Let's keep this civil and let's stay on point. But are we are we are we talking about one meeting on February twenty second, and now one meeting on February fifteenth? No. no, because she can't come on the eighth. We would have. So we are you willing to miss the eighth? Okay, but we're not establishing two meetings a month permanently right now because we're no. going to have to talk about it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. All right. So on on the dais right now is a proposal to discuss methods of discussion on February eighth and go about our plentiful regular board business, and then have a second meeting, a second regular meeting on February twenty second, to advance whatever happens on February eighth. 
Which will be a short turnaround time. Which will also again, be a short turnaround but, time. Yeah, because. But my understanding was that the idea is we would have the February 8th meeting with what's currently on the agenda. And then we would have a February 22 meeting to discuss oh, with these those, three with things. Those right. three things. That's very right. good. I'm, I am fine. Oh, oh, okay. As amended, I am fine with that. So to be clear, February 8th, regular business. February 22nd, a substantive discussion of how we proceed. Process going forward. Okay. Oh, okay. That, any other assent for that? I'm just saying that was Can I ask? All right, Carolyn Tarosis is in the queue next, so I'm going to honor that in, in absence of any other way to discern an Thank order. Thank you. Um, okay. I, I guess I'm fine to wait for a month to have this discussion, although I would like to make it a little bit more concrete as to what you're coming back with, because I don't want to just sit for another two hours of spinning our wheels. Um, I think that it's really important that you come back with a concrete proposal for the three different options and pros and cons um, and and specifically like what these types of bodies would be able to discuss um, if anything I, and again I don't want people out there to think oh my god we're doing all of this other stuff with pass-throughs I actually just want to do this as an exploratory matter to hear from these people um, so I just want to make sure that it's like super clear and that we have a way of um, having these groups come back like within that 90 day period that I, um, I had out outlined. So that's that. The other thing, I, I have three other items that I, I would like to add. To, to what? That you'd like to add to what? Because I'm, I'm asking staff to come back with information at the next meeting with these. The next meeting in two weeks. So if they're new you items, could... would you, the rules of the board allow you to put them on as board discussion items for the next meeting. Right. So anybody can do that. No action can be taken on a board discussion item, but direction can be provided at that yeah, time. Yeah, none of these things are, are policy. These are like informational only. Okay. I want an update from building and safety as to what's happened since we uh, enacted our construction uh, streamlining process. I feel like I've been asking for that every month. Um, I would like them to come back. If it's not at the meeting in two weeks, that's totally fine. But I'm just telling you again that I'd like to get an update from building and safety. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and then, okay, do you want to respond to that? Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I did want to respond that I talked this week with um, the plan checker in building and safety who's responsible for reviewing the earthquake retrofitting applications. He said they're receiving um, a handful a month. If they come in complete, um, they are making it through the plan check process in the usual amount of time, which is approximately three weeks. But very often plans are not submitted in a form that are ready to be approved. So there's some going back and forth um, to get the plans ready for submittal. But so that was the update that I was able to get from the building and safety department. Yeah, I want them to come here so that they can answer to us. And I would like to hear from them about that. I. Well, it, no, we, I, they we don't can have invite them. Right, they do right. not answer to no, you. Sorry, answer but... to our questions. Um, answer our questions. I have many of them. Um, sorry if that sounds uh, harsh. I, I do, and I I don't just have questions about earthquake retrofitting. I have questions about how the process is going um, since we updated our means and methods uh, process to. Oh, I, yeah, I can comment on that as well. Um, <clears throat> I believe I don't have it in front of me, but I believe that that item is tentatively scheduled to go before the council um, in March. So they are making progress on that. I can be specific with that. Um, I just don't have it in front of me, but that, I know it is on a upcoming agenda for the city council. Why is it on the city council agenda? Because the city council adopts the tenant protection or uh, regulations or ordinance related to uh, the means and methods plans and the uh, tenant protections with respect to that construction work. So the council will be, those are council ordinances and they are making recommendations for changes to those ordinances. But didn't we also adopt changes to our regulations pursuant to adding the means and methods plan in no? Yes, uh, yes and that is part of what they are considering. Okay, okay. 
Right. We okay. said that negotiated agreements um, through our mediation process could potentially be part of a means and method, a revised means and method plan, and that is one of the things they are okay. considering. I would like after that for them to come back to us. I would also like um, at, at some point a staff report on on technology, um, in addition to a way a path forward for this email listserv. Um, I would like an update on the protecting our diversity program. Um, and I would also like an update on the Ellis study and what happened since our last uh, situation. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 I don't, these are not, this is not reasonable for two weeks. I'm just telling you, I'm directing staff to come back with information for us on these things. Just, so we will put that on the future agenda as a board discussion item. Discussion item, item. yeah. Um, but for us to, yeah. To, and, and I would invite uh, board members to further discuss this with staff if, if there is additional detail or, um, about an individual board discussion item, but that can also be achieved um, further uh, after this evening. Yep. Um, so, so back to uh, our consensus around the future, and then we're going to, uh, we need to wrap this up. All right, Commissioner Duran, I'll entertain your comment. Uh, as to the meeting on the February 22nd, if you could include in your reports uh, information as to the uh, fiscal impact or, or the, the amount of money that it would take to have either a uh, Brown Act subcommittee or a non-Brown Act subcommittee because I'm, I'm, uh, I want to make sure that we remain as frugal um, as we can given our budget. So I don't, I don't know what the... If it were, for example, to be a Brown Act committee, how much more staff time does that require? How much, you know, and I know it's an estimate, but I mean, is it cost prohibitive given our budget? I'd like to know that to assist in my decision as to whether, what kind of a com committee, if I choose to do one, I would like to have. Make right. sense? Yes, it does make sense. Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Uh, Commissioner Phyllis, you're still in the queue. Any last thoughts or may we wrap? All right. Uh, we're going to adjourn our meeting i thank you all for no. entertaining my motion motion to i need a motion to adjourn and i want to thank you all for entertaining my first night as chairperson of Bravo. an elected body it was not always easy but i enjoyed it move to adjourn and do we have a second I second all of those in favor of adjourning the meeting aye aye, aye. I, we, I it's totally the photo. Know, I mean, I just got I didn't know. I I mean, I I just got I I didn't know. I I didn't know. 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 I I no, I just feel like uh, this is very important, but there's Hi. other really important stuff too, and I'm aggravated, not at you, just at, at this building and safety shenanigan that I feel like is going on. I just like don't even know. Well, I don't know that there's a shenanigan. No. <laughs> I'm going to take some vanilla chip rocks. I, but hasn't it been a year since we first had them come here? But it's not on the table. Yeah, I know, but. It's because we have all this other stuff. Well, I'm actually the board of running the table. No, 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 but did it. But